Welcome back to the Lefties 2 broadcast, and this is the one. We've been waiting a year for this, or about maybe 10 months. Now we have 80 players exactly, and we've already rated the top 10 players uh, after a year. We had a 2.0. Now we are going to rate, not the top 10. We're not going for the top 10, but we are going all of them. All 17 pitchers, 17 to 1. We're going to rank them all 17 to 1. And again, this is my opinion. My thoughts on how exactly this whole thing works. All right? So there's going to be possibly some controversy. If you guys go back 10 months in the description, I will post the link to the first top 10 pitchers. But this isn't top 10. This is all of them. All 17. 17 all the way up to 1. And here we go. Let's get started with number 17, the worst pitcher in this game, in my humble opinion. Terrible pitcher, J-Ho. J-Ho is the worst pitcher in this game. If you can notice, his control velocity is solid. Uh, movement and spin, okay, below average. Sinker, slider, fourth ball. He doesn't have any really consistent fastball. And, again, the winning percentages are all jacked up based off Clash League. But the ERA is still pretty bad. Um, I do win typically with him uh, when it comes, but he is the worst pitcher, mainly because he doesn't have that consistent fastball. And his breaking pitches are they don't really they don't they don't really have any kind of cut to it. They're not deceptive, right? So it's like none of his pitches you could see them coming a mile away. His slider, his fork ball, they're very easy to spot, and a sinker again. Is helpful, but not really. You need to have another fastball to be a more complimentary two-seamer or four-seamer, in my opinion. So he is number 17. All right. Chop him off the list. Number 16. And, guys, he used to be the toughest pitcher in the game over a year ago. Right? A year and a half ago, probably the number one pitcher, hardest pitcher in this game. He has gone all the way, probably in the top three, all the way. Now, again, he wasn't my top three a year ago because he was already like nerfed back then too but at the beginning of this game impossible to hit but he's number 16 his name is Mueller the dude is straight garbage two seamer not deceptive his sinker ball and change up don't help that sinker ball used to be one of the most difficult pitches to hit the sharp cut of it it doesn't even matter if you match him up with Matthew to get a little extra velocity He's terrible. They nerfed him in this game, and a lot of people got really pissed off. So he is now ranked number 16. And again, like going back to J.O., we're not talking about the offensive aspect. Just actual pitching. Okay? So, J.O. 17, Mueller 16. Next for this terrible list, soon to be better list, is Maria. She is number... She's number 15. Right, and the reason why is her she has four pitches. Her slider's not that great. Her changeup is her best pitch. Fastball doesn't have any velocity. You have a fastball with zero movement. Again, she has two nineteen movement. That's for the fork and slider, and that changeup it does have a little bit of movement. But that fastball doesn't have any movement at all. It's just a straight, straight four seamer, right? So it's not really great. She doesn't have any velocity, so you need to have really good placement with her which can help in my opinion. But for me, ever since I've been playing this game, she's been that pitcher where I can utterly dominate. I probably have a 90% winning percentage against her. Again, winning percentages are all jacked up. Thank you, Miniclip. Appreciate it. All right, number 14. She used to be higher on this list, but not anymore. Okay, Caroline. Again, a lot of people do use her really well with that slider. Her slider is probably her best pitch. Um, and again, her ability to have that perfect control at two strikes does help, especially when you pair her up with Jessica. But at the end of the day, that slider can't be done. The fork ball, after a while, gets really easy to tell. Right? You're typically mixing the two-seamer and fork ball. But again, it, it, it becomes she becomes a liability. A lot of people do really, really well with her. And again, winning percentage jacked up. It's over 500. Not that much, but still... Uh, she is ranked 14th on my list. All right, here is the, probably the first controversial pick in my list. And the reason why is because everybody overuses this pitcher, and it's just so annoying. And guess what? 
I'm glad they nerfed him. I'm glad. There's Roger. Roger is, for me, I'm terrible with him as, a, as using him. Unless I'm using Clash League and he comes out of the bullpen. But he used to have 219 velocity. They cut it down to 209. And he's not good. I destroy Roger. All right? I destroy him. I love the fastball pitchers. Um, but for me, it's just overdone, overused. And he's just not that good. Right? People, there are people that are good with him. But, you know, if you can spot the four-seam and two-seamer and kind of understand the strike zone, it's good for you. But, again, this is my list. Rogers 13. Trade trash. Unlucky 13. All right. Moving on up. Michelle is our next pitcher. She is number 12. Number 12, because, again, similar to Maria, is that that four-seam is just straight. She does have a little extra velocity. Uh, when you know when you pair her up with uh, with Matthew in that slider curveball combination can help, but it just isn't good enough in my opinion to be high on this list. Way better pitchers than her. She's up there, number twelve. All right. Next we have Marie at number eleven. All right. The main reason why Marie is number eleven now again if you pair her up with her sister Rose, uh, deadly with that changeup. I'm telling you, adding that extra changeup does add that element of making her a great pitcher, but her, her lack of control in this game, right, it's just, it's just sporadic. So if you're going to use her during, like, say, Clash League, you know, that she's a giant circle. So having to pair her up with Jessica is probably a better idea, but at the end of the day, she is just not consistent enough to be a really effective pitcher, even when you get her at the 106 when you pair her up with Matthew. All right, so now we're going to Number 11. Nope, that Marie was number 11. Number 10, top 10. Top 10, we're going with the Viking, Eric. All right, so again, using that cutter four-seam pairing makes him much more difficult to hit. And again, high velocity, pair him up with Matthew. And again, being able to really loopy 12-6 to curveball really kind of helps when it kind of adds to that. And again, if you foul him off, he gets a little bit better with that spin. So... Eric, for me, is the 10th best pitcher in this game. Next, we're going to Garcia. Now, Garcia, again, a little bit of extra velocity, but overall just a, just a balanced pitcher with control, velocity, and movement. And with that sinker, curveball, it really, really helps because that break can be unpredictable depending on how you use it. And with that four-seam fastball, it's not his best pitch, in my opinion, that sinker is – but you can kind of be a little deceptive with that four seam when you're pitching on the corners. So that's why Garcia is number nine in my book. All right, number eight. Haven't used him much, only when he was boosted, but Murdoch. Okay, so Murdoch, again, even at the highest level, his velocity is not there, but he's a ground ball pitcher. And that Murdoch two seam fastball is going to be deadly once I get him to level 13, which will probably take another year and a half. Um, but with Murdoch, when you're able to get two strikes and then kind of like Mueller in a way where you get that little flaming ball, that, that Murdoch two-seamer with two strikes does come up big. And again, you could be a deceptive even though he's not a fast pitcher with his velocity. So that's why Murdoch is number eight. All right, number seven. We're going with Riley. So Riley is indeed uh, number seven best pitcher. In my opinion, again, I don't really use him that well, but in the sense of it all, it is just the velocity. All right, you don't even have to be a good pitcher to use him. You just got to throw heat and then have good, well-placed sliders, well-timed sliders, and it throws people off. So the reason why he's number seven is the fact that you don't even need to be a good pitcher in this game to win with him. But at the higher levels, you're going to need to be have good use of that two-seam fastball that he does have to get a little bit of extra movement. Because most people can't hit him anyway, so it's how it works. All right, going from one extreme to another, number six is Jay. Jay is number six because it's one of those pitchers you've got to be patient with, right? He's not a, definitely no velocity. 159, probably the least velocity used pitcher in the game. But that rising changeup mixed with that fork ball that kind of goes starts up and goes down definitely throws uh, batters off. Again, you've got to be patient with him if you're facing him. And even 
when you're using him as a pitcher, you've got to make sure that you don't just keep throwing strikes. You've got to throw around the strike zone, and you could sneak a couple of those rising changeups in there with that two-seamer. Again, he throws 92 with Matthew. So using his off-speed, he's like the opposite. Use off-speed and then slip in the fastball when you can. All right, number five. This guy dropped all the way from one to five in my book. And let's go get him. It's my guy, James. Now, James, I do have way more wins than any other pitcher. He's still in that top five, mainly because of that two-seam fastball, right? His two-seamer still has a lot of movement at 193, so that really helps and keeps people, like, just keeps people off balance. And then you kind of throw that changeup. His changeup does really, really well, either high in the strike zone as a ball or drop down low, have batters roll over it, especially those right-handed batters roll over it down the third baseline, get that triple play and extra innings. So James is number five. All right, so number four, we're getting closer on that list. Number four is Yuna. All right, so Yuna, again, being able to, if you are a thr strike thrower, right, she has amazing control as long as you don't throw a ball, which can be deceptive because if play, you're playing against better players, they know that you're probably going to be in the strike zone more often than not with her because she loses that control uh, quite a bit from 236 to 206, still pretty good. So that, that control is pretty consistent. When you pair her up with Jessica, pinpoint accuracy. Pair up with Matthew, get a little extra on the velocity, uh, which makes her deadly as well, especially in Clash League. So she's number four. All right, so number three is Mei Ling. Now, Mei Ling idolized Yuna, as you can see in her bio. But the reason why I like Mei Ling over Yuna is the fact that she has a two-seam fastball, which a two-seam adds that movement, right? That movement is deceptive, right, compared to a straight fastball, right, when you're just trying to bring the heat. Two seam as the movement keeps batters off their toes, and then you can intertwine that changeup and fork ball, especially when you get the strikeouts with her, because her because her spin rate does go up and it allows for a lot of swings and misses with her. Next, we have two pitchers that are left in this list. Who's number one? And who's number two? Okay, number one is not Shotaro. He is number two. And the reason for this is that he does have ridiculous statistics, right? That splitter and sweeper pitch are almost unhittable in some aspects, especially as his velocity grows every time you get a strike or a foul ball. It's stupid, man. It's like a cheat code for a lot of people. He is beatable, in my opinion, when you face him, but you've got to be patient as well, right? Because people are trying to be deceptive. But once he throws in the strike zone, it's not a lot of movement, right? That's his least... His least best attribute is his movement. So once he's in the strike zone, and once you understand the sweep versus the splitter versus the changeup, you can face him enough times, you're going to be able to read it a lot better. And once he's in the strike zone, that's when you make him pay. So that means, obviously, number one in my book is Wade. Wade is the best pitcher in this game. Again, because he has that two-seam fastball as well as that curveball that does... Again, when you're, a lot of people use legendary players. And when you get someone that it does better and he throws faster with the better players, it makes it easier. So Wade's, really, his weakness is common in rare players, right? Uh, his changeup, his slider, it's all of his pitches are fantastic. Movement, spin, definitely help. And match him up with Matthew, increases the velocity. And again, with legendary players, it's up to 100. All right? And the control, if you need more control, patch, match him up with Jessica, and he becomes even deadlier. Uh, with pinpoint accuracy. So this is my list of the top 17 pitchers in this game. Tell me what you think. Who are your list? Let me know. Put it in the comments. See you guys next time on Lefties 2 Broadcast.